let us go to Vegas and say hello to Kai Kai friends. Hello, sir. How are you? Morning, Ariel. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, are you not adjusted to the time zone there? Because I saw weren't you were online very early this morning, and I was it was like eight, seven a.m. my time, which is like four a.m. your time. I was a little concerned about your sleep patterns. Is everything okay? Yeah, no, we're good. Okay, <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I was probably just up going toilet because I'm water loading at the moment. Oh no, yeah, that's no fun. All right, so I just wanted to make sure you did just receive your bags though. Three days without your bags. Yeah, yeah, just got them. But uh, I knew, like, something I've learned early on in my fight career, always pack your mouthpiece and your carry-on. Ah. That's all you need to fight. That and your health, all the hard work's done, so don't, you don't have to worry about a bag. So we were good either way, but it came today, so. A yeah, bit annoying? Or like, were you were you annoyed? Were you agitated? It's always annoying when the bag doesn't show nah, up, right? It is, but it's out of my control. Like, I don't really put energy into it. I just, it is what it is. I'm not really... One to um, hold on to things. It's fight week. You got to adapt. You have to be able to just roll, roll with it. It's that's how it goes. It's never going to be smooth sailing, and that's that's what I love about uh, the fight game. I travel fifteen hours um, to go compete, and you just have to go with it. And then fight day, you just got to be able to perform at your best. So yeah, it's all a part of it. Um, obviously, I'm assuming you were happy. You got the the call to headline. Uh, your first UFC event, but it is all the way in Las Vegas. Uh, would you would you rather fight closer to home and maybe not be the headliner? Are you are you okay with this? I mean, it is it's a long journey for you. Yeah, it, it's one of these things where the UFC trusts me to deliver. They want me to showcase this flyweight division, and um, that's what I bring to the table. That's what I bring. That's what I'll be bringing Saturday night is going for these finishes. Uh, I've had five uh, five or six bonuses now. Um, you know, 11, 12 knockouts on my record. So that's, it's in my resume to, to, to put on exciting fights. So it's, it's nice that the UFC, you know, see that. And um, here we are now headlining. So wherever it is, it's always um, great that, you know, we can be the, the main fight and, and um, get more, more attention, more people watching. And um, I can go out there and remind everyone why I'm one of the best flyers in the world. Uh, we were supposed to see you in February Unfortunately, the fight didn't go as planned. What happened there? Uh, just an injury. So I had a back injury that was uh, flaring up, and, and I just had to rest. That's something that I've had to kind of uh, put into my, my training and my camps is to invest back into my body, more recovery, more mobility, more um, investing. So it's been a, it's been a nice reset. Uh, you know, our camps are so long and so hard at City Kickboxing that, you know, it, it is definitely on the verge of overtraining. So we have to be told to like, pull back. Um, I'm one of these guys that are, you know, I do everything uh, that I can. Um, you know, I'm constantly in the gym, constantly trying to push push those boundaries, push those limits. So it's something that, uh, yeah, it's it's just to have longevity, you have to be able to adapt and, and uh, pull back when you need to. So. Uh, I'm glad that uh, it wasn't, you know, um, it was an injury, but it wasn't a major injury where, you know, I was sidelined for for uh, too long. So uh, this will be 11 months since I last fought. So a lot of time to kind of uh, reflect and regroup. Um, but I've been busy. I've been busy outside of the, the cage. Um, and I want to ask you about that in a moment. But speaking of the 11 months, last time we saw you was in July. That was such a big fight for you. Uh, and, and I know you were very upset afterwards to to kind of sit on that moment and not fight for 11 months coming off that fight. How has that sat with you? No, I left it in the cage. I didn't take it off me. Um, you know, I was proud of the camp I put together. Um, I was winning that fight until I wasn't. And that's the pod- positives that we can take away from it. It just shows that I'm right there with the best guys. You know, Moreno is a great fighter, a great champion. Did great against Figgy, made it look easy. Um, and it just showed that you know, we, we were right there. So having a teammate like Izzy, who's been in the, uh, who just beat a guy that's beaten him three times, just reminds me that it's possible. It's, it's something that I've, I'll never lose sight of. And it's something that, um, that's the end goal is to be a flyweight world champion. So, um, yeah, we've, we've learned from that experience, you know, being in my first five rounder, my first world title fight. Um, and I'm older now, I'm 30. I'm, um, got more experience, a lot more wiser. And, um, yeah, we, we just do it again. 
by the way, how do you, like, I know you say you leave it in the cage. How do you actually do that? How do you actually leave some, like, I, I just feel like that's like an unnatural human thing. It's such a big fight, so much poured into it. How do you, I don't doubt that you did it. I just want to know how you did that because I feel like that that secret could be applied to anything that happens to us that we don't achieve in our lives. But then we, I, I, I tend to harp on things. I tend to be a glass half empty guy who laments things for weeks. How do you actually do that? Well, you just got to take it for what it is. It's, yeah, it's a fight. It's a world title fight, but it's not, you know, um, you know, I've still got my health. I'm, I can still fight another day. So that's what I put energy into. I don't, I don't, um, yeah, I don't hold on to it because it's not going to do me any good, you know, taking that with me and, and having that as a burden to, to where I want to be and, and progression. And also like, you know, having a family that and having a son that's looking up to me, I've got another one on the way and another baby on the way. Um, I've got to be able to just regroup, pick myself back up and, and um, show this is how you pick yourself up from a loss and any adversity. Um, there's a lot of uh, life lessons in that. So, yeah, I don't really dwell on it. It's just we, we reflect, we be honest, definitely um, dissect what we need to from it. But um, in regards to a loss, you know, I've taken losses before in my career. Look, look, I'm still fighting the best guys in the world. I'm still here um, in the UFC headlining a card. And, um, you know, Saturday night, you get to remind people why I'm one of the best guys. Uh, by the way, when is your second child entering this world? Uh, August. August 16 is oh, wow. our due date. So, yeah, not too far away. We're just over halfway or more than halfway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and do we know the sex? No, no, no. It's going to be a surprise. So I like it. Something this year, I've, what I've wanted to do is be more patient. So it's a uh, great way to practice it. Did you did you uh, leave it as a surprise the first time around? No, the first time we, we found out early. But this time, you know, it's just, there's no, either way, blessed boy or girl. Um, my brother, uh, my, my, sorry, my son's going to be a great, he's going to love having a sibling and he's going to be a great brother to, um, to whatever it is so yeah it's it's nice that growing the tr growing the tribe growing yeah. the, uh the cut of france fano and um yeah this is this is what i love to do i love having um more responsibility more i guess purpose more things to fight for um keeps me hungry keeps me accountable and just keeps me pushing to be better uh, by the way, not a lot of people doing that these days. They do like the reveal thing with the balloons and this or that. I love that. Very old school. Uh, I have three kids and all of them were a surprise. The, 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 the gender was a surprise and, and there's no feeling like that. There's very few surprises left in life. And so much respect That's to you guys for, for leaving it to that. I, I love that. It's, uh, it's a very special thing. And so, all right, so we're getting this call to, to headline this event. And, and just curious about that Australia card, getting a chance to fight so close to home, I'm sure was very exciting for you. Um, what, what was it like when you had to make the call that, you know, you couldn't fight on that card with the likes of Alex Volkanovsky and so many others? Cause it had been such a tough three years for you guys, especially you guys, right? Everything when, when you had to make that call. Yeah, definitely. It was, a um, it was one of those, I was gutted that I missed out, but I was still there as a guest fighter. So I got to soak up that, uh, atmosphere and just seeing the fans, how excited they were to have the UFC back on home soil and, and the flesh seeing it seeing it in their own city. So that was awesome being in Perth and, and, um, you know, just, just soaking up their energy with, um, with my home hometown support. Um, but yeah, it was, it was uh, a shame because that crowd was crazy. Like just seeing only in Australia, you'd get the chance that were going around. Um, only in Australia that they're so vocal like that. I, I think at one point they were trying to get a beer tower around the whole stadium. So they're stacking up cups. Oh, my trying God. to get them around. I think Tai Tuivasa did about 12,000 shoeys that day. And he was just, yeah, it was just awesome to be there and, and um, to see Alex go out there and, and um, lay it on the line, challenge himself. And, you know, the Rob was, the crowd was robbed of that one. Um, Alex was robbed of that one. Like it would have been amazing. The, the atmosphere would have exploded. Um, and it just, yeah, that's, that's a, it's a tough one when it doesn't work out like that, but, um, regardless of, of uh, that outcome, it was such a big success for the UFC to be back in Australia and they're coming back in September. So not looking past them there, not looking past this Saturday at all, but I'm expecting a lot of fighters from our gym 
um, to be a part of this. And it's great for local fighters to get their shot um, to be able to fight in the UFC. Uh, what are the things that you said you're you're doing outside of the cage in, in this little you know break, if you will? What, what are those things? Um, yeah, so the time I've been away, I've been busy filming a documentary. So it's called Caged. Uh, it was um, streamed on a mainstream platform in New Zealand called TVNZ. So massive platform to... Uh, I guess, showcase combat sports and my journey into the UFC and how I got there. Um, the cameras were following me since my last title fight in Dallas, so they got to see the build-up. Um, they were pretty much trying to humanize what we're doing, so people get to see the insights and, you know, how I balance being a father, husband, um, how I, you know, prepare for a world title fight, uh, life after losing a world title fight, what happens? You know, um, they followed me to Tahiti. I was doing seminars over there, um, going back into my hometown, to back onto Amarai down in Napier, um, going over to New York, um, um, supporting Izzy for his world title fight. So people got to see a lot of um, insight into, you know, what actually goes on into, into my world. And then also the interviews with my wife, with my mum and dad, with my brother, with my coach, Eugene, with Izzy, Dan. So it was awesome to get, you know, how they actually think of me and um, my journey. It's it's such a, it's pretty surreal when you look back and how far I've come and where I am now um, to be, you know, be the only 1% that make it in the sport and especially on my side of the world. So pretty privileged and honoured to be able to showcase that and represent New Zealand combat sports. Um, so now people that don't necessarily watch fighting are my audience now and awesome thing about it is just another chapter. I'm still in my career. I, I'm still, you know, on this path and now they're on that journey following me into this fight. So that's been something I've been doing. Um, also I'm coaching for a rugby team down at, uh, it's the Warriors is the team. It's a rugby league team in New Zealand, a professional team. So I, I teach the wrestling and uh, kind of the mental aspect that fighting has taught me and what martial arts has taught me and how I can implement that up to them on the field and help them in their sport. Also efficiency on, you know, how to, how to use your body and then also how to use your weight. So I'm a flyweight, but I can make myself feel like a heavyweight. So heaps of things I've been able to take away from being in that space and, and being in that coaching environment, but also uh, building together. Um, so now, you know, I've told the boys before I left that, I've been watching them play every week, and now it's my turn to go out there, go out there, and, and um, go to battle. So it's great that we can collab, City Kickboxing, the Warriors, um, and yeah, do it together. Okay, I I love both of the things <laughs> you just talked about. Number one, uh, can we see that documentary here in the United States, or at any point will it be here? Um, it it will be there. It will be available um, eventually. It just plays in New Zealand um, for the time being. Okay, but. You know, we we've got all that content. So once once it's I guess finished its deal in New Zealand, then we can showcase it to the rest of the world. So um, definitely be on the lookout for that. It's called Caged okay. by Kaikara France. And uh, I I have seen um, photos and stuff of you teaching the rugby players at at the gym. I see Izzy as well involved a little bit, but like you're the coach, meaning. Like, are you working with them on a consistent daily basis? I thought it was just like a hey, you know, like I saw one time. Alex Volkanovsky shooting baskets with one of like the Australian. And I was like, oh, that's a nice promotional thing. You're actually on the staff? Yeah, I did the preseason last year. Wow. Uh, for three for three months, I was taking them twice a week. Um, and then in season, it's, uh, you know, I'm not the priority training. I'm just uh, complimentary. So I come in every two weeks, just when they can fit me in. So these guys are traveling pretty much every week into Australia to compete. So um, I'm just coming in there to, you know, give advice, um, upskill as well as um, just keep them sharp, keep the standards high. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm heavily involved. Um, this is a team I've grown up watching. So wow. it's pretty surreal for me to be be involved in, and, um, you know, looking at the coaching staff. They were guys that I grew up watching. So now, you know, I'm working alongside them and just seeing how open minded they are. That's what I've loved about it is they're really welcoming. And I brought my teammate in, John Vaki, that. He went to the Commonwealth for wrestling so he can help when I'm not there. So he's, you know, helping out now. Um, and it's just awesome that we can collab and, and I bring them into the gym sometimes. So city kickboxing, they can mix it up with uh, the boys. And then uh, most of the time I'm down at their gym um, where they play their games in their stadium at Mount Smart Stadium. So 
yeah, it's, it's cool that I can be in that space. And I, I learn a lot myself, just how a professional team approaches uh, a season. You know, these guys have done most of the work in the preseason. And then in the season, it's just about nursing injuries and how they have longevity and how they uh, manage the travel. So many things that play a massive part in uh, a professional sport. So, yeah, it's, it's great that I can um, represent them now as well. I love that. That that is a brilliant uh, role for you, especially since you you know you grew up watching that team. And and you mentioned uh, Izzy's win in April for someone like yourself who kind of uh, you know a little bit in the same boat, right? Like you were coming off a loss, mm. and I saw the video of you uh, reacting and the video of Alex, like just how tight knit all of you are is 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 pretty special. Um, can you describe what that does to you? I know it was like a couple months before your fight, but just to see that and witness that and the way in which he did it. As you're preparing for your fight, what does that do to you? Yeah, just it's inspiring. It's just like a, just a reminder that it's all possible. Everything that you want in life is it's all right there. You just have to hold on to that, and that's what I love about Izzy and his uh, approach. He never lost sight of what he wanted to do, and he never lost sight of beating this guy. He he always knew, okay, I can get it back. Um. And I, I love the way he talked about losing in front of uh, in Madison Square Garden. Like for this next fight, nothing else can hurt him because it's already happened, right? So it was like freeing, and that's what you saw in there. There was just like there's nothing to lose. It's 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 already happened. So what what have I got to fear? So um, yeah, just really just in awe of his whole story and and what how he's able to overcome all of that and. People keep bringing up it's three and one, but that's probably one of the biggest sporting moments in our generation. It's just the way he did it, the backstory, um, the history, and, and you know how many people were watching that fight. So, yeah, pretty pretty amazing um, to see it all happen. And you know, you saw the excitement that we had on our our faces just because it was shocking. Like no one expected that. How do you suspect Saturday's fight goes? So yeah, Saturday, um, uh, I'm welcoming the challenge to this guy, Amir. He's got, you know, hype around him. He's on a win streak. He's got momentum, but I'm here to stop that. I'm here to take that and, and use it to get my t uh, title, title uh, back on track. So that's what I plan on doing. Um, you know, I fought these guys before. I fought these wrestlers. I fought these guys that are undefeated. Um, I fought these grapplers. So um, we've done our homework and uh, we'll be ready. So... I'm expecting a great fight. I'm exp I'm expecting him to bring the fight to me, and and uh, I'm expecting him to put him away. Looking forward to it very much. Welcome back, Kai, and uh, thank you as always for the time. Really appreciate it. Uh, just a few days before this big comeback fight for you. Uh, good luck, my friend. Take care, and we'll talk to you very soon. Appreciate it, Ariel. Thank you. Take care. There he is, Kai Car France of City Kickboxing in New Zealand. Big fight for him against Amir Albazi, as he said. Uh, on a bit of a run here, the Prince.